Ah, yes, the Gucci bag. <laughs> so this this is a uh, we're we're now talking about metaverse and mm -hmm. uh, we might talk about uh, also of NFT and things like that. Yeah. And um, you, of course, you know might know that story. But the Gucci bag was sold for four thousand. I think it was four thousand uh, dollar on the metaverse world. And the same Gucci bag, the real one, uh, 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 I think was worth. 3200 so it meant that in the 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 in, in in the the this metaverse world i don't know how you called it but in this metaverse world uh, gucci bag was more expensive than in the real world so yes. I, I think this is very of, of course it's fashion but i think it's very important uh, to notice that and uh, uh, if we go on on the next slide this is a uh, like an art collection, but in in the in the metaverse, and uh, it, it's not so long ago. Huh? Uh, for example, mm -hmm. uh, this is a this is a picture from the the first of December, when the person uh, spent uh, forty ethers. Uh, mm -hmm. It's approximately one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar buying NFT uh, or art to display in the metaverse. So the, that person bought a virtual plot of two ethers, so it's around nine hundred thousand dollar of real dollar. I, I could say that at the current price, and uh, he uh, he um, he built a ten on eighteen square meters of gallery called Toy Fade uh, Face Cafe, Toy Face mm -hmm. Cafe. Uh, that's named after his uh, NFT collection. And in the last nine months, uh, he had made over 1 million selling NFT in yeah. this virtual world. And, and what is maybe funny uh, uh, to, to, to make that long story short is that at the end with, with this million that he earned, uh, he uh, bought, uh, uh, he invested in other artists, real artists. In, That's in, interesting. Um, so, so uh, I mean, there is, a, there, there is for the moment, there, there is a link between this virtual world yeah. and the earning that you, what are you doing with the, the, that money, you know? Uh, you can invest, but uh, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know, Francesco, uh, you, of course, you hear a lot about, uh, this virtual world. Uh, I don't know if you agree with it. What do you What do you think about all this NFT meta metaverse and Personally, and I know that yeah, it's not my you know my bread because I like assets. So the reason why I pulled out from the stock exchange because I was tired to lose money in something that doesn't exist. So I pull my real money <laughs> in, yeah, and I see graphs. So if the graph goes up, I'm happy. If the graph go graph goes down, I'm unhappy. And then also my money goes down, real money disappears. It has like, if it goes down too much, he has like a, uh, uh, how do you say, the lost, uh, yeah, like you, you got to a point when you close your position and everything is gone, even if it goes up. So I decided to move out and uh, put my real money in real assets. assets. So personally, I say, I am not interested I, I don't want to debate if it's art or not art because art, cannot, it's not me saying it is art or not. If somebody likes it, I think it's more than welcome to buy it. Uh, prices are going up. It's, I think, uh, at speculation because it's a beginning. So everything is the beginning. The first, like, people was 60 million because that was also a marketing tool to grow the value also of uh, uh, Bitcoins, to show there are another extra way to use your Bitcoins, you buy art. And so I think the NFT was created as an extra tool to use uh, crypto. It's mm -hmm. some are nice. Some, some, I mean, if you have a big video, <laughs> I want to be blunt, but if you have a big video, you can put it on. And, and uh, about I wouldn't I wouldn't pay to have something on my mobile phone I, I, on my on my web on my uh, laptop I, I'm already too much on these tools that I prefer to live in the real world. 
I so think I wouldn't two... buy for, uh, the Gucci bag for 4,000 years in the metaverse. Uh, I would buy it in the real world if the liquidity rate is good as an investment, minding that you cannot use it because if you scratch it, then the price goes down. And maybe in the metaverse, <laughs> you don't have this problems. <laughs> but but you, you know what? I think what, what uh, and that might be something uh, that will be written in books that uh, some some days or weeks ago, you know, at uh, Art uh, Basel Miami, Miami yeah. uh, we, we saw some fundamental uh, change. change. Uh, yeah. uh, so the, the solidification of the entrance of cryptocurrency, you know, everybody was talking about it, uh, the, the blockchain and all things NFT. And I think that was uh, that was something that was really uh, something new for uh, Art Basel Miami because that was something that was more real even if it's it's not something concrete and and I always you know compare that to uh, the e-sport you know uh, mm -hmm. five or six years ago uh, when I was living in the state one of my friends uh, told me that e-sport was something that was absolutely crazy and amazing and I didn't know what it was uh, and I say, how can you, you, you know, eSport, I might be it's old saying cars. that, but no, 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 eSport huh? is looking at someone that is playing a video game. So oh, you don't play okay. your own, you go and you look at someone that is playing video game. And uh, I, I, I said, was how can when I was 10 because I didn't have money, so I had... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's another thing. But, but you know, and, and, and I said, how can you look at people that plays uh, on video games? And uh, in fact, I, I went on YouTube and look at it, and I saw full stadium with more than 40,000, 40,000 people looking at people uh, playing a video game. And I said, I was, I was not too old for that, but I had to change my mind. Uh, to see that, you know, the new generation, not all of them, but the new generation is looking at sports, you can call it sports or whatever, uh, at a different way, different level, you call it as you want. And I think in a certain, you can a bit compare that to art, that maybe the new generation is looking at it on a different way. You know, they saw, uh, I think last week, a virtual yacht uh, in the metaverse for more than six hundred thousand, six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, you see that that's impossible. You can't go on it. You, I mean, you have no jacuzzi. You can't eat it. It's nothing concrete. But someone or uh, several, uh, lots of people bought a part of the yacht that is on the metaverse. So I think it, everything is evolving. Of course, it's not my. It's not my, I mean, I prefer to have a, you know, a, a painting as we have here at the bank or something like this. But I think we, I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'd, I'd say it's, it's a different way to look at art or sports or things like that. So, so I'm, I'm not against it because, because I don't understand it. I, I'm trying to understand how youngster and the new generation are looking at a different, uh, you know, a different, uh, um, how, how they look at arts and the new yeah. arts, if, it, if you can, if you can say that. I'm actually, um, um, I'm working for Weiski now. I did the exact opposite to Francesco. I went from the physical to the, to the meta and I'm, uh, you know, we're running a platform now and it's probably the only, well, one cybersecurity is very important in all of that. As we know, there's hackers and there's all sorts of, uh, hurdles that you need to, to look at, you know, to make sure that you understand. But um, at Weiski has 25 years experience in cybersecurity. And uh, now they've launched their own platform, which I'm the art director of called Wise Art. And uh, yeah, so the, the, I mean, I followed Miami, obviously, very closely. And the, the jump from Miami Art Basel in September to December in Miami was just phenomenal. Like there was two or three galleries in Basel and, and the whole of Art Basel, the whole Miami week was around the 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 in the uh, metaverse. So I think it's important to know that we can bridge it, that there's both ways and we can work fidgetally, they say physical and digital. 
Um, but yeah, so anybody wants to know more about Wiseki, that will be on another on, on another webinar. Um, but, we've but, got but, some uh, questions. Just, just if I can just uh, uh, add a, a last word, uh, yeah. 16. Of course. Uh, 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 I would say that, uh, you know, contemporary art was worse in 2019 around the, the sales that were made around uh, uh, Contemporary art was two billion dollars in auction in yeah. 2019 before the COVID, and it was 92 million in 2000, the year 2000. So from uh, 92 million in 2000 to two billion 20 yeah. years after, and now the contemporary art, this segment, this segment, sorry, has now overtaken the old masters and the mm. 19th century. Yeah. So, I mean, things go very fast. Yeah. I'm talking about 20 years, not 200 years. Mm -hmm. So maybe the metaverse, and I'm not a fan, fantastic fan of it because I like to touch things, you know, but maybe it could be something, you know, that, that, that not will overtake, but the value of it could be higher than contemporary art. I think it's just a, a new medium. It's an extra yes. medium. We have paintings, we have drawings, we have prints, and and, and now we also have uh, NFT. I, I think it will just it's develop. It, it has developed in a new medium, so it's fine. Some people don't like that. Some people don't like uh, prints. So they won't like NFT, or they would love it. And uh, who likes paintings? Don't buy drawings. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, there is it for everyone. It's true, and I think it's important to see as well. And I see it every day with the with the Weisky because I'm contacting digital artists as well as physical artists who actually want to do NFTs and learn about it. Um, and that's part of the vetting. But the uh, the it for the artists, it's a new tool, and they're exploring. But they've been doing digital art since the. I mean, Andy Warhol was already playing with digital art in the early '80s. It's just, I think, the NFT, which is a new medium, uh, and it's a new sales medium, and it also has different uses. It's not just for to make money. I mean, it's good for museums. It's good with this blockchain to inscribe things for all eternity, apparently, and immutable. Um, so, yeah, there's so many things to look at. But what I thought was interesting, I spoke to someone from Christie's who said that um, when they started selling NFTs on, on their last auctions now in, in November, and the, they had new customers come in interested in the NFTs and who eventually also bought physical art. And likewise, they had traditional collectors from their client base who, who were interested in NFTs as well because it's a new thing. And, um, you know, and they want to be with it. I mean, they want to understand. Diversification. Is, diversify also in art. Yeah, in exactly. Exactly. Periods. Francesca, we have a, a comment from Jessica Thompson-Moore, who says that you have a brilliant site. Lot Art is a brilliant site. And that you've developed some very ana analytical tools useful to give clients liquidity and information. So there you go. This is Jessica Thompson-Moore. <laughs> Um, I have also more questions, which I'll quickly go before we move on. Um, it's also from my, oh, there's a lot of them. Hang on, I just have to move it a little bit because I can't see them. Okay, one again from Martin. Thank you for being here, Martin. Um, is there an area or artist within old master collecting that attracts more investors as an asset class or not? So is there a specific area within old masters that is probably that is more popular than others? For example, you have prints. Um, do you have do you have any idea about the, the market? Within, is uh, within the old master, what is popular? I, I, I personally like portraits. Mm -hmm. uh, portraits they are because they're very present, it's very expressive. I mean uh, the uh, but it's a it's a personal I mean I, I couldn't say that portraits go up more than others yeah. or which which is the there are artists that are uh, of course worth more <laughs> uh, like uh, Leonardo da Vinci worth more uh, than Dura even though 
I mean, or uh, I, I mean, it, it's difficult to, um, to to answer such a such I a think question. Maybe... I wouldn't say. I mean, it depends on, on your budget. Mm. If you if yeah. you can't so, so for example, something we are working on is image recognition. So the idea is, you know, when when you go to a museum, you take picture of let's say there is a a beautiful uh, Leonardo or Tintoretto or something that you can't buy. And then you can search the database for something it's similar, similar style or similar subject that you could actually, which on sale at auction, which is actually affordable, mm -hmm. affordable depending on because like a follower of Leonardo or a circle of could still be worth a million. I mean, of course, much less uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, yeah. original. I think I can add to that as well. And Martin knows that as well as I do. Um, that it's um, old masters is a more difficult um, maybe class of assets because there's authenticity problems. There's also where they are. If they're in Italy, it's very difficult to get them out uh, of the don't, country, don't get it, don't et cetera, et cetera. So it's, um, you know, old masters is, again, you need a lot of training and a good eye. But I mean, you can find old masters, whether it's, in, you know, Dutch masters or whatever, who are much, much cheaper than modern art. So, I mean, if you like that sort of collecting, you can probably um, yeah, I mean, do very well Lasky, for less I mean, money. Lasky it's now one and a half million minimum, mm -hmm. two millions. With the price of a Basque, you, you can get uh, absolute A grade, uh, A grade uh, old master. Uh, yeah. So, it depends, I said, again, on your taste and on your financial um, objectives. Absolutely. So, what is your strategy? If you, you buy old master as a for a con conservation capital conservation purpose, in my opinion, unless unless you have together, let's say you with a, an expert who tells you because you leverage asymmetries of information. Say, look, it happens like recently, uh, a Caravaggio <laughs> was sold for was on sale for one thousand five hundred euros in Spain, and and then. Obviously, they, they, they more people. Or if you are the only one, you get great. If there well, are more, yeah, then they block the sale, and I, the the government came in, and blah blah blah. But, but we, okay. we go into legal yeah. there. We go into art law. We have another question from Laura Klein. Uh, if and we're back into the metaverse, if the new generation preferences are changing, which I think they are. Switching from a physical art asset towards virtual art assets, like in the metaverse, then how will uh, the art dealing market look in the future? What is the guarantee that the investment in art today will be worth more in the long run, like the next 20 years, if the buyers are less in numbers? Well, I think so that you're probably saying less in numbers in the physical world, because I think they won't be less in the digital world. Um, I don't know what you Both. think. What what do you Go think, ahead. John, on that one? Well, I, I think there is no. Of course, there is no guarantee at all. But, yeah. but uh, I will say, two hundred years ago, there were no guarantee as well. Uh, <laughs> so, so I will say, contrary to the the contemporary art or art uh, with NFT, there is no, you know, vetting of collectors. Uh, what is vetting is a you know, the practice that I in, intend to stop the most speculation buyer flipping artworks, mm -hmm. uh, artworks by quickly really reselling them, uh, uh, them at the profit. We have, with NFT, you can do that. Mm -hmm. With art, it's a bit different. So, I mean, today, of course, there is a question of a new, new trend as we're talking about, but there is also a question of, uh, of money. Uh, and if you can flip your art NFT from one day to another uh, to win one or two million, uh, why why not doing it? But is mm -hmm. that art? I'm I'm not sure about it. Yeah. So there is no guarantee today. But just as I said before, uh, 200 years ago there were no guarantee as well. So I'm 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 uh, I, I think it's a bet. And the first thing, if you buy something on the metaverse, I think you have to be convinced about it. It's not just about money. Otherwise, you buy crypto or you buy Bitcoin and you think it's going yeah. to 100,000 or 1 million or whatever. Uh, and you don't buy any piece of art on, on the metaverse. So, the, no, no, unfortunately, there, there is no guarantee at all regarding that. It can go to zero. 
What I find also interesting is that there are people who were, as we said earlier, that are working with digital art some 20 years already. And these things are now also again with the pandemic, I would say, because the artists started being creative on how to download this because they had no galleries left um, because they weren't open basically. <laughs> so this net NFT um, developed very quickly or more quickly, it was already there, but it sort of boomed. And I think, again, there's a collector's point of view because the, the first ever crypto punk, which I won't describe as art, yeah. um, also sold very well because it was the yep. first one. Yeah, the first is know, always, the first... it has a meaning, as a collect, we, you, we, you go to memorabilia, to, to another mm -hmm. thing, it's, it's a collection item, which the, his value is because it's the first, like when, mm -hmm. when they sold the NFT of the first tweet of Twitter. Yes. Yeah. I understand that it's memorabilia. It's the first you got the first, and there's some history. Like they also sold the 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 WW the World Wide Web uh, protocol, which was also I mean that's it's part of history. It's sociology as well. So um, I think there is there will be um, you know a, a, an upward trend with those NFTs. And one thing which I'm completely convinced about is that it's gone so big so quickly it's not going to disappear anymore now it's it's almost gotten too big to 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 fail i, I mean i don't want them to disappear i mean i said it's another it's another medium mm -hmm. so well be it i i don't know if new generation will prefer why would they prefer uh metaverse instead of real i i mean i i hope not or like if they prefer to watch people play video games instead of going running, then maybe a cause of the higher number of obesity into a youngster now. It than... depends. Yes. It depends how we control these little tiny things called viruses, maybe as well, because well, no. <laughs> well, we can't leave that home. But but, but, but sixteen, there's also one thing you know when when clients or, or people are asking me where. where uh, where is the Bitcoin going in five years? Yeah. You know, what will be the, the value of Bitcoin? Uh, the, the answer I'm giving is that I, I don't know if Bitcoin will still exist in five years at all. Mm -hmm. I know cryptocurrency, that, that's my conviction. Cryptocurrency mm -hmm. will exist and the blockchain will exist, of course, but I don't know which currency. So that could also be kind of answer. I'm yeah. sure the metaverse will still exist. But will that painting that you paid maybe one hundred thousand uh, dollar today be worth more in, in, in ten years or five years, or will it still exist? Exist? I don't know. In fact, yeah. but I, I I think the whole universe will still be uh, will still exist. Yeah, I think so. I totally agree with you. And I think that's where, again, it comes back to normal collecting, buy what you like, because at the end of the day, if you've got your own digital gallery in the metaverse and you want to show it to your friends on your iPad, you've got to show things that you bought because you like them. Exactly. Yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, it's, it's already thir two minutes past the time. So d did you have any more final uh, things, slides to show us quickly or? Do no, you... no, I think, I think the, the best thing, it was just a general overview. So we have some, yeah. you know, we have some figures and things like that. The best thing, 16, if I can send you that present, the small presentation. And uh, there, there are, I think many questions that could be answered here and yeah. many things Francesco was talking about as well inflation and other things that are where you can find some charts on it and uh and um so so feel free to ask 16 or myself or anna and uh and with pleasure i will send you uh, this uh this presentation yeah, i can Perfect. also send That's you great. something as well I mean, I on art investment for for your students if you like to share that's great. That's thank you very much, Francesco. Um, we're all on LinkedIn. So anybody who needs to contact us, we can all find each other there. I'd like to thank you all very, very much for your participation. I think we have no more questions. So but it was a, a, a very nice, active and dynamic discussion. So I can't thank you more. It's the last one of the year. So I'll take this opportunity to wish everybody a very happy 
holiday silly season go 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 crazy go and buy some <laughs> nfts and have fun <laughs> I, i hope next one maybe it will be in presence Yes, that would be very nice. Absolutely, Francesca. I always come with pleasure to Geneva. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much, John. Thank you very much, Francesca. Thank you so much. Thank you, And we'll Stina. see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.